like you said, the first few years you have uh, really run into some big problems. What do you think, what change you made to make a difference? You think you are? So the, the number one problem that we had early on was we just, we weren't ready for the plants when we got them. So we didn't have the plastic lid, we didn't have the beds shaped. Um, we kind of went into it like we would, you know, cantaloupe or tomatoes or something where you can kind of get away with doing it last minute. Um, that's a bigger, hardier transplant that you're putting in the ground. You know, you can run some drip and take care of it. And we realized very quickly that strawberry plants aren't like that. You have to have a very tight, very well worked bed that they can go into. It needs to have adequate moisture. They're, they will not forgive you for putting them into a less than ideal situation. So that was the first thing we learned. The second thing was how big of a deal runners were going to be. Um, we let runners get away from us. We let them come off the edge of the plastic so they're in the soil. Then we were putting people that weren't adequately trained out there to try to pull runners. And what we found, and we didn't know this was happening at the time, but a lot of the plants were getting pulled up out of the soil. People were getting really rough with them and they're yanking on the runners. And instead of pulling out or down, they're pulling up. Um, and that, that led to a lot of plant mortality. So the following spring, we came back, we pulled the straw off. We're expecting that we have all these healthy plants there that are gonna give us fruit. And we're probably looking at, you know, 75% plant loss in some, in some places. And once we started pulling the, the crowns up and looking at them, you know, you could tell how high they were out of the ground and those roots were exposed. And so we started changing the way that we handle runners. We try to usually prune them off with hand pruners now. Um, and also the raised bed kind of helps with that because you can grab the runners and you can pull straight out or down. You don't have to lift up quite as much and it makes it um, a lot safer and easier on the plants to, to do that. Um, We've had some other problems too. I mean, honestly, we've had a little bit of botrytis this year. So we are starting to see some, some fungal pressure, but on plastic, I think it's a lot less than what you're gonna see in matted row. Mm -hmm. um, and we just try to stay on top of them like we do all the other crops that we grow in terms of, of practicing good fungicide rotations and just staying on schedule with those cover sprays. And it helps a lot. I think our problems this year came from having that frost event and then seeing all of the flowers that died and strawberries then were not a priority for us anymore. So mm -hmm. I think during bloom, we got a little bit behind on some of our covers and I think that's where we have some botrytis in there now. But it's not been, not been a significant issue and hopefully we'll get that cleaned up going into next season. Great, great. Then my last question, Kevin, and you, you mentioned the um, frost this year. Mm -hmm. um, what you are planning to do in the future to correct this? So we've been very fortunate. Uh, we have had a lot of problems with strawberries, but in 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, frost was not something that we encountered at all. It wasn't an issue. We might have had a few scares, but definitely not to the point where we experienced a, an economic loss. Um, we had economic losses, but they were due to other problems. So this year was the first year, and you know everybody always talks about frost protection on strawberries, frost protection, you know this and that, and uh, it was one of those things that for me as a grower, I just hadn't experienced it. So this year I was very unprepared. Uh, we were about five days out from the projected frost event when, when we actually started planning on what we were going to do. Um, we don't have a water source here at the farm that makes above ground irrigation a feasible uh, idea for us. We just can't supply that much water. Um, so we, we looked at row covers and we ended up putting on a 0.9 ounce per square yard row cover, which now having talked to other growers, I was talking to you earlier, earlier this morning, and I, I, we now know that wasn't enough. We need to put on a heavier row cover. So, Next year, we are going to be much more prepared for that. We'll probably use at least a 1.5, and I think that'll give us some more protection. Um, and we'll probably, in the spring, the very early spring, we'll probably go out and kind of stage those row covers and kind of get things set up so that it's going to be easier for us to apply them. Because uh, we were just chasing our tails this year, and it obviously led to suboptimal results.